All right, well, Treasury yields are falling after that May CPI print coming in cooler than expected. For more on the market's reaction, we've got Blake Gwynn in studio here with us, RBC Capital Markets Head of U.S. Rate Strategy. We also have Jason Drejo. He's UBS America's Head of Asset Allocation. Great to see both of you. Blake, let me start with you. The reaction that we're seeing here in the bond market, we've got yields tumbling on the heels of this print. I'm curious what this print signals to you and ultimately the impact that it's going to have on the bond market. Yeah, I think it's the first you know good print that the Fed wants to see. I think um, you know there was a lot of positivity around uh, last month's, or I should say, the April inflation data. Um, but I think that took some of the edge off around risks of a reacceleration that we had kind of coming out of that very strong Q1 data. But it wasn't what I would call good. I mean, you know, core PCE we had 0.249. You carry that over out over a year, that's still three percent plus inflation. Um, today was the first one I would consider good. 0.16 does get you to a two uh, a two percent you know, year over year number at some point. So um, I think the Fed can count this as one in the bag for good prints, um, but I still think it's gonna take a couple more before we you know, really start putting that, uh, uh, putting that cut, uh, setting up for that cut at the next meeting. Yeah, and the Fed has certainly indicated that, that they need to see some trends. But Jason, I do want to bring you in to the conversation here. Uh, we're already seeing some commentary about whether or not this is immaculate disinflation. Is that what you would say you're seeing here? Well, well, it's clearly a very good print, right? I think across the board, all the data was sort of, you know, told a good story. The one actually thing that was a little bit on the high side was OER, the owners of Colvett Rent. But the good news about that is like the direction of travel still seems kind of lower. So it was a very kind of good print overall. But as Brent said, it's, you know, this is the first real month where it's been kind of a good story after three poor months and one sort of in line. So I think it's a little too soon to say it's, uh, you know, it's a uh, kind of a great disinflation story. I think for the Fed, it's kind of really good news because it basically gives them optionality that if things deteriorate, they can move more quickly. It makes, I think, certainly Powell's life easier today at the press conference that he can sort of justify if they go to two cuts, as we think, to say the inflation story is moving in the right direction. But now they can kind of wait to see the data unfold. And if they need to, they can move quickly. The inflation story has kind of given them a little more room there. Look, I guess my question is the reaction that we're seeing in the bond market today. Do you think that's justified just because this is just one print? Yes, it is good news, but we need more of a trend. No, I think it's justified. And I think if you look at what happened immediately after the print, we kind of moved down to those support levels we saw before the NFP print. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of back to the lower end of those ranges. And much like into the NFP prints, I think markets are trying to figure out what the range is going to be over the summer. Are we going to go back to those kind of April, May type of ranges and kind of stay in there? Um, or we're going to break to this new lower range, and we're right on that precipice right now. So I, you know, I don't think it would take much of a, a push by Powell to get us over that. Um, but I think one thing that we uh, uh, sometimes mistake about Powell, we always kind of say, oh, he, he's always dovish. I think he's more uh, uh, anti-market sentiment in a way. Like he's always kind of pulling back on the extremity. And in a time where we've been very hawkish for a few years, that has generally meant he comes out a bit more dovish. So I do wonder if he's going to come out today and say, hey, look, this is one print. He's actually going to take the other side and kind of say, hey, let's, you know, we didn't overreact to the hot prints in, in uh, the early part of the year. We're not going to overreact to this, this low print. So I think markets are rightfully hanging out right around that precipice to kind of figure out what we get from Powell and where the next few months are going to line up. Can we pause on that, Blake? Because I've not heard that take before, so I'm really fascinated in it because I would assume, and since I'm paid to, you know, look at financial markets just as closely as you are, I would assume that the market rally and the Fed kind of allowing that to continue without being even more hawkish means that Jay doesn't necessarily care how much of a rally we see. Why am I incorrect about that? No, I mean, I, I think they are probably very happy with where markets have been trading in this kind of one to two cut type of range because, um, you know, it, it gives that optionality. Um, you know, if they have to go to one, um, you know, if the data moves that direction, they're kind of set up for that, set up for two. I mean, I think it's a very good place for market pricing to be for the Fed. Mm -hmm. um, I think what happens is if we start to really push that narrative, we saw this in, in extreme late last year. If we really start to go too far on cuts and start to look like we're boxing them in, if we move to three cuts priced, I think Powell wants to push back against that. If we start moving to one cut, he would want to push back against that. I think markets and the press are more like a sine wave going back and forth, and the Fed tries to cut a nice, even-keeled balance through, through the middle of that. Jason, I'm curious how you see the Fed uh, balancing the risks right now, the risk that maybe they aren't going to act quick enough, ultimately what that is going to look like here as those ripple effects uh, play out in the economy, and then, of course, the ultimate reaction that we could see in the equity market. How do you see... Powell addressing that and I guess his ability here to walk that fine line. 
well, let's kind of first assess the potential impact of them being a little bit too slow. In some way, the market is already doing the easing for them. If rates are coming down, if equity markets are rallying, credit spreads are tightening, financial conditions are easing, and that's a positive impulse for growth. So if there was a kind of a growth slowdown and they are some way behind the curve, the market's kind of doing some of the lifting for them. So again, that gives them a little more optionality to, to wait. And if the data gets worse, of course, the market will probably price in even you know, more aggressive action, even potentially kind of in July. So this is kind of a good situation for the Fed after what it was a difficult situation earlier in the year where the inflation wasn't running against them. I think they can, again, keep that even keel. Something I've looked at, it's interesting, if, if you take where the Fed's dot plot would be for the end of this year, whatever it implies for the Fed funds rate, from June of last year, it was around 4.65. It's basically held steady there. It did spike in September. It might take up again this month. But that means that over the year and a half or over a year, the Fed's pretty much had a consistent view of where they think they'll be at the end of this year. The market's oscillated a lot around that, but I think that tells you that, yeah, the Fed tries to kind of think through the noise, the oscillations, and has a pretty even keel approach of how they're taking it, even if the market doesn't always like it. So Jason, help our investors for the rest of the trading day. We had the Apple breakout here, superseding Microsoft. We got the soft CPI leading us to new rounds of all-time highs. What's the bigger risk to that today? Is it the Fed meeting, the dot plot, or Chair Powell's commentary? Uh, it could be Chair Powell's commentary in that, you know, if the dots go to two, it's and now things seem to be pretty likely. It's more along the lines as he sort of pushed back and become sort of more hawkish, try and downplay it. So I think there's a scope that he might try and try to like think of this as where where we want to you know have a uh, sort of almost a hawkish outcome given how the markets react. So I think there's a little risk that he may not sound uh, as as dovish as the market would like after this inflation data. So I think that's that's the risk is the markets move higher and lower rates, and he might try to pull a little bit of cold water on that.